Okay, good morning everybody. So today I am going to have a friend of mine from Brazil named Nelson Silva. And Nelson is really a, a master, a master at everything digital. He is a researcher, hello everybody. He is um, a clinician and someone that I, I highly respect. So once Nelson comes on, we will um, get started and he can talk about some of his recent research and we will discuss what's happening, you know, the difference in Brazil and in the United States. So let's see if Nelson comes on. Are you going to grow your hair during the quarantine like in your modeling days? Yes, that's, that's the goal. I'm planning on not cutting my beard until, um, until this ends and my hair as well. So let's see, maybe my hair will end up super, super long. But um, let me message Nelson now. Okay. So, in the meantime, anybody have any, any questions about anything while we wait for Nelson to come on? Greetings from Dusseldorf. Oh, hello. I used to live in Cologne for uh, a few months, so I was in Dusseldorf often. What a beautiful area. Hello, everybody. Let's see. We've got a lot of people joining. More people wanting to learn about the digital workflow here. How is Pearl going? So Pearl's going well. Um, this time with everything being shut down really allows us to kind of sit down and focus because you know that's what we can do right now. We can we can still do AI. We can still train train models. So um, yeah, it's it's good. Hey, my dad said hello. Hello. Oh, there's Nelson. He's here. Let's invite him in. Oh, from Switzerland. Hello, everybody from Switzerland. Let's get Nelson in here. Okay, so Nelson should be joining us. Here we go. I'm adding him in now. So we've got people from all around the world here. Nelson. Hello, just one second. Let me put my camera on the right. Uh, okay, position. yeah, we want to see second. your face. Yep, that's uh, that's what's happening now. Um, I'm going to go down a little bit too. All right. Uh, we still maybe here a little bit. That's okay, I guess. There we go. Boa there tarde. we go, Kyle Stanley. Nice Como to vai? see you. <laughs> so, are you? Where are you in Brazil? Um, I I'm from a city called Belo Horizonte. Ah, yeah. Which is southeast of Brazil. Yeah. We have Sao Paulo, Rio, and Belo countryside in the middle yeah. of the mountains. Beautiful. So it's, uh, we are here, uh, locked down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same as here. So before, before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself? I mean, you already said where you're from, but what you do, what your interests are, so that some of my followers that may not know you yeah. can learn about yeah. you. Beautiful. Uh, Kyle, first of all, uh, it's nice sharing that with you. Um, I feel that I know you for a long time. In yeah. fact, we met just once for 10 seconds yeah. uh, during the Chicago midwinter. That's right. But uh, I must, I must uh, uh, compliment Christian Coachman who had the, the idea to put all of us together. Yeah. Uh, the, last, the last time I saw that happen was uh, during Nobel BioCare days back then in 2004, 5, 6, 7 mm -hmm. with uh, Heliana Canepa who really yep. did a great job and a lot of people in our group uh, belong uh, belonged to that group of people. I can right. say Eric and Nitsan and, yep. and, and in terms of names. Yep. And Christian was very uh, fortunate to put all of us together that we can share even 
some of you in a distance and uh, and uh, I'm really glad to say that live uh, because this is I believe that's how human beings should behave exactly gathering people right and especially exactly. now especially now yeah so I I um, I'm a dentist I have done uh, I graduated in Brazil uh, in 1990 so I'm turning 30 years of dentistry amazing and yeah and a little Part of this, I have gone for a master PhD. We can skip that a little bit. I think the nice uh, during my career was the opportunity to move to the United States, uh, to New York University, uh, university especially, particularly, where I spent 12 years um, wow. um, developing work, teaching, and it was a great experience. And, and then I decided to come back to Brazil. And what did you do your PhD in? Uh, I did my PhD in the biomaterial science, mostly Amazing. with prosthodontics, and then I finished my PhD at New York University, and then I ended up in a postdoc, and I took a position at NYU. It was really a little step, and NYU was building a very nice uh, research center under several good researchers, and Van Thompson uh, was one of them. I must acknowledge that Van is very important for me. And, uh, and, and we did a lot of biomaterial development and work. A group of people, not myself, I must say that. This is not yeah, only me. Of course. But he was, he was uh, very uh, good on putting people together as well. And that we came up with a lot of work and some tons of publications, Kyle. It was a great Yeah. Time. And I know that, you know, you're very well known in, in the research community. You've published a lot of articles, a lot around uh, intraoral scanning. Uh, why don't you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, I can. Uh, my, my, my work at NYU was mainly on material science. So one example, we helped Ivoclar on the second stage development of Emax in 2005. Wow. So that gave us uh, a lot of strength on understanding the the direction that companies on the materials on the material side were going back then. So why these companies develop developing blocks? Why they are pushing blocks? Why they are pushing machines and so on and so on? And was uh, now I can really understand easy that uh, they would like to have more control of products in the way that people is handling, especially ceramic, as we all know how. Um, uh, skillful someone must be to handle ceramics yeah. in, in the level. Right. So when I uh, moved back to Brazil, I, I did not have, of course, the same environment for, uh, on the material science. And I was, I was already in contact uh, with a company, I can disclose it, but I don't mind to disclose it, uh, Trishay. Mm -hmm. uh, back then in 2012 and then when I moved back to Brazil I already had a uh, relationship with the company on the development side being part of what they call advisory board a uh, few of us around the globe which would help them to improve their device uh, then I switched completely from the material science uh, you know kind of development to concepts on enhancing and how I can spread the way that people can get scanners, scanning, understand that. For me, yeah. it was the beginning again. I was beginning uh, because it's a different environment. You must be very knowledgeable in softwares and computer. I'm still learning a lot, I can tell. Uh, yeah, and you've been, you've been really involved with 3Shape, I mean, for yes. more, than, more than eight years. You know, a lot of people uh, yeah, still say, don't have digital scanners. Seven years would be more official number. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. But a, and, a, and, a very long time. Yeah. But because I believed in what the companies back then were looking for. Yeah. So imagine you, you're shifting from producing powder for ceramics. Now you have a block in a machine. Yeah. So, so you need image and you need a CAD to design it. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of had a feeling that that would take off. Maybe I, I pitched the right uh, spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, and I could produce some papers, um, not more scientific, but con concepts behind it. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and then a lot of people jumped in. Of course, Christian is one of the, the, the beginners as well on, the, on believing that would be Paulo Cano, of course, um, yes. brilliant mind. 
Uh, I put myself and others. I mean, I don't want to, to put this as, you know, it, we believe that things could be done on that, on that route and people would work. Well, and, and we still don't know if it's right or wrong, right? Because yeah. Discussion. Well, I think, you know, when I, I was in Brazil in 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. and I really saw that the Brazilians were believing in the digital workflow early, maybe even earlier than, than other countries. And that's from me being an American living there. Mm -hmm. I knew, you know, at the time in my residency, we were doing a lot of guided surgery. We were uh, printing maxillas and, and designing things. So I think that Brazil was, was ahead on, on a lot of this. Uh, I, I must say, yes, uh, a lot of good people here. Uh, uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, you may know, Kyle, we have 20% of the dentists around the yeah, world. Right. Yeah, 300,000. And, and, and we are going to be 30% very soon. Yeah. Uh, some government decisions. Anyway, this is a political discussion. I don't want to go that because this is uh, it's a little crazy. Uh, then what that does is it makes competition harder. So people mm -hmm. must push themselves uh, to yeah, succeed. True. And that's why you have tons of, you know, very nice, very skilled people, very yep. smart. And then when technology comes, people see a good opportunity to get, a, to get a niche on the market yep. and then so on. And then the companies and so on and blah, blah, blah. Right. So, uh, uh, but it's still uh, the adoption, as you know, is still very low. Uh, I see the All US around the world. ramping up a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen from now on. But <laughs> like anyways, this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Brazil is still in a slow growth. Uh, yeah. you know, this tip point did not come yet. It's going to take a little bit. It's a financial. Uh, well, I, yeah, I know that with scrapancy. Brazil, the hardest part with Brazil is everything that is imported is so expensive. Double the it price. Is. The taxations over is um, very high. Yeah. So I remember. Uh, when I came to Brazil, um, I went home for Christmas. And when I went home, all my friends said like, hey, can you bring me, you know, 3M PVS? Or can you bring me like, you know, little things that I took for granted that are so expensive in Brazil. You know, I was yeah. like smuggling, um, <laughs> sm I was like a, a smuggler, smuggling dental materials back for my resident, my, my co residents yeah, this is true. Uh, we still have, I mean, for us, for most of us, uh, this is a little delicate, but I don't mind to share, is when you have a material that is launched in the U.S., FDA approved, and we don't have that here. So if you want to be competitive on the, let's put on the lecture side, on the yeah. lecture business, let's put the lecture business, Kyle, that you are yeah. in, I am in. So if I want to be competitive, if I'm not competitive on the bad way, if I want to be part of the group, if I want to get invitations, I need to get the state-of-the-art materials in my hands. Yeah, you agree true. With that, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we are still doing some of this, but things is getting a little faster on the approvals. Mm -hmm. But it's still, I mean, if you have something approved that will come from now until six months, uh, the window is quite big here for you to be up to date. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and but now some legislation is being changed. You can get it for six months as a, a, a borrow stuff. And Got it. Testing or something. To help because we have a lot of us, uh, uh, and, and nobody wants to be smuggling things to right. Anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Agree. I wasn't. That was a joke, right? No, no, no. Of course. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, we all do that, guy. I mean, come on. I, I'm not being naive. Not saying no. <laughs> But it, but it is improving, but it's very restricted, and, yeah. and that could be a, a, a problem. I know if someone get caught, I mean, sure. this could be could be an issue. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, particularly where we are now, is step on around the globe. Yeah. So this could be could be an issue, and that could go worse. But so, it's, it, 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 that's how it works. So let me ask you this: based on a lot of your research, what are the limitations right now with let's say, intraoral scanning? Uh, my observation, Kyle, I can share some, some, some ideas with you in a little bit, uh, is um, there is a misunderstanding of what the device really is. It's not a magic wand, and we all right. know that. This is, 
So if you invest the money, you must understand that this device has limitations. It will help you. And um, some people are really tied up to numbers too much to get one. Yeah. If you start making calculations on the number of production, put in that perspective, this is, um, it may not match up. And then you lose some of the other things that you can pile up on the numbers that would help you to sell a case or to sell, anyways, a lot right. of other things that we Or to be predictable or reproducible. Yeah. I think this, this, this is one limitation that people don't talk too much. They are really into what the scanner does for you physically yeah. so right. i think this is i would say this is the first limitation is the real understanding what this can really do uh, for you this is yeah. the first one what that does to me may not match to what it does to you mm -hmm. this is one point production does for everybody but i i do other things more than that yeah uh, uh this is another point um of course um uh, eventually cases uh, we are still facing some challenges, although we are being able to do dentulous scanning. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have professionals uh, doing it, some better than I do. Uh, but we have on the dentulous concepts, uh, uh, what they call dynamic impression, as we all know, that yeah. scanners cannot capture the dynamic yet, right. yeah. as yet, I would say. Mm -hmm. And the other point is uh, some concepts. I'm going to give you an example on complete dentures that we did in the past as a conventional way to do it. So we have to get the flanges all the way up and so on and so on. Uh, we have groups evaluating. I have a couple of cases here that I have done, which we have done infrared scanning, a, a million production of uh, complete dentures with a shorter flange. Okay. And the mucostatic of the denture is so good and so close that you don't have any shrinkage uh, or expansion from the processing of uh, um, flasking and deflasking and blah, blah, blah. So you don't uh, need as long of a flange. Up. Yes. But, interesting. I'm not saying to people to do it. Sure. Please, it's just. Yep. So we need to understand that the digital process on the process procedures are now being more understood and some of the modifications are done to adapt to the digital algorithm reading instead of getting a conventional and adapting the digital to the conventional processes. Right. I think, I think that's the major, uh, you know, mindset that needs to be changed that we can. That's improve. really interesting. I think there's, there's, oh, did I, did I miss Nelson? Nelson's gone. So he was talking about using a, an intraoral scanner to do full arch dentures. Okay, so uh, edentulous, edentulous cases, and discussing that because the the intraoral scan is so accurate that you may actually not need uh, as long of a flange. Very interesting concept. Let's see if let's see if you can come back. There he is. Let's add him in. Okay, you're back. I'm sorry, it's it's some um, uh, unstable. But uh, uh, anyways, we're here. That's okay. So um, let me ask you this: while we're talking about edentulous cases, mm -hmm. do you have any tips for scanning edentulous cases? Uh, the divas are here. Hello, yeah, divas. Uh, yeah. I, I, we have several ways to do it, and people is trying to find the best approach on doing it. Uh, yeah. Some people, uh, I, numbers are coming out, papers are coming out on the best way to do it. Uh, some colleagues are trying to scan it uh, uh, in one shot from one end to the other end. Okay. Then you scan the palate from one side to the other side, okay. and then you come to the buccal side. Okay. Some people are recommending instead to do uh, the procedures before and then you move forward. Uh, the fact is, when you do a straight line from one end to the other end, it seems that the algorithm, they work better. I need to understand that a little more. Yeah. I, I, I see proposals coming all over. 
uh, based on accuracies, on stone casts and models and so on. Uh, I yeah. still need a little more understanding. There is one Italian guy, his name is Lucio. I can share the, that on, a, on your webpage and, and, yeah. and after that. He has a lot of papers and he has data on the way that he behaves. Uh, and first of all, you must have a very powerful computer to get to get all this data fast, especially for the lower ones when you want to really come in on the lower and and in one shot you yeah. make it straight. Some so, colleagues of mine. For so instance, how important Adrian, Adrian do you think? Dental, I'm sorry. How I may have lost you. Let me change here some of my settings. Uh, okay. How important do you think the um, the scan path is? Okay, let's see if my Wi-Fi is better. My son is watching Toy Story right now, so my uh, my Wi-Fi may not be as good. <laughs> How important to you, from a research standpoint, is the scan path? Uh, it's a good question. Very tough, huh? Uh, it is the beginning and the data must be as accurate as possible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's what's going to help the manufacturing at the end, right? So if the numbers in the beginning are not adequate, of course, the numbers at the end when you manufacture is not going to be adequate. Considering that we will have some bumps along the road, you need to change some settings uh, some compensations that we all do on the processing side, uh, regardless printing or milling. Uh, so I think this is the key. And, and I mean, for instance, if you go for hybrids and you want to scan a hybrid using uh, intraoral scanners, uh, we all know that little deviation that is happening is the major yeah. issue. And that's why a lot of research, a lot of colleagues of ours are still one step back on hybrids and go for impressions. Yeah. Or right. one good idea as well is the pick dental from Adrian, our colleague. Of course. has a quite interesting concept, which is not a, a scanner. Mm -hmm. It uses photogrammetry. Yeah. And it's a different algorithm reading. And, and, and that seems to be very efficient. Uh, but again, you need an impression. You need to you know, scan the gingiva. You need some other components and so on but the implants are on the right position. And how uh, about, think... how about, you know, I've seen some people for full arch scanning, they use a marker and they make some marks with a marker. I've seen other people that make little, like um, uh, little dots with composite. composite. Yeah, yeah. Do, are any of those recommended from your standpoint? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the marker, let me put my perspective on my understanding. So what we have is a, a device that reflects the light. The light becomes a number, right? Mm -hmm. And that number calculates. So when that number calculates, you will be stitching that calculation, right? So mm -hmm. as much what I call obstacles that we have, more prominent ones, more uh, uh, easier will be, let's put it this way, they stitching because it has uh, references. Yeah. From markers on the color side, uh, color doesn't give you obstacles, okay. just an image. However, mm -hmm. if you have composites, for instance, what I have done, for instance, Corregue strips. I had cut Corregue, Corregue strips in a small pieces and I had glued them in. What's Corregue strips? What is that? Uh, it's all uh, denture strips, the, the glue. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Corega is the, 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 the commercial number. I don't know okay. how this is called in the U.S. Corega belongs to Colgate, I believe. Got it. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a denture strips. That's how we call it, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, denture adhesive. So, yeah. So if you cut them very small and mm -hmm. glue them on the ridge and so on, what you're creating is obstacles. And, and the way that things can... Yeah. be red, and if you want to come back, that reference could be done. Uh, this That's being, a great tip. This seems to be uh, a way to go 
for cases that you don't have references or maybe the reflection of the ridge is not adequate. Yeah. Of course, you can have powder if you want to enhance the reflection. I think we are talking about things that without powdering. And, right. and, 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 and that's the way it should be. Uh, so I know people is doing it. It's being yeah. efficient. Then all those uh, little things can be then smoothed out gently. Mm -hmm. You need to work a little software. Some people is questioning that those cannot give you exact precise on the danger. Uh, I think what's what, what's behind it is uh, okay. I, I'm just adjusting my technology to the clinical situation and not the clinical situation being adjusted to my technology that I have. Right. I see that in a good way until we have all this AI coming in, all this data that can be done, all this uh, dynamic yeah. and, and and reading of the the attachments could be done better. That yeah. We all know. So. Here, what I'm doing, if you ask me, Nelson, how you do in your office, I scan the top. The top one, you can scan it. Mm -hmm. And I take impression of the lower and I scan the impression. Interesting. For mm -hmm. now, because yeah. I am still struggling on the lower um, scanning. So if I can- For fully that, edentulous. The fully edentulous, fully yeah. edentulous. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, uh, people with teeth for uh, liners, I mean, this is, I believe, this is, has no discussion. I mean, it sure. just works, uh, and, and, and you can have some variation on the yeah. strategy of scanning with teeth, uh, more or less accuracy, depends on how you do it. Each company recommends a way to do, and um, this is already a done deal, I believe. And, and similar to what you were talking about before, um, I forget the word you said when you add little bumps. What did you, what did you call them? Oh, no, the little bumps are what we call obstacles. I mean, obstacles, create... right. Yeah. So if, if obstacles are good for the scanner, one reason, one thing that I know many companies discuss is to start with the occlusal aspect of the teeth, right? Because you immediately get these, these obstacles and these cusps yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, valleys. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's an interesting thing. I can't remember who it was recently. Oh, I think it was uh, David Norrie from Belgium, he told me that when you're scanning, um, or maybe it was David, I can't remember, I think it was David. When you're doing a, um, a scan body on an implant, it's better to scan it at an angle than scan the flat side first. Because when you scan the flat side, you can have problems with the occlusal space. And that seemed like such an interesting thing for me and a great little tip for everybody. Yeah, I think the, the angulated scanning uh, is what we're doing yeah. for the anterior region for sure, because you need to give information for the computer in terms of the algorithms that the stitch can come on the buccal side and, and the positioning. And, and when you just scan really flat on the top, you may lose some of this data and that can create inaccuracies on the region. Yes. And that one comes, okay, now the occlusion is not good enough. And right. we are now learning that, okay, the occlusion is not good enough, not because it doesn't work. It's because the way we are capturing the information yes. is wrong in the beginning. That's why this is so important. So you need to, I mean, we are learning. This is a learning curve. And, and I think this uh, uh, is coming out. I mean, again, AI is taking over big time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and that's, that's going to improve significantly. And I agree yeah. with you. That's, that's how it should be. Great. Um, one other tip that I have seen from, and, and I have done myself that, that I think the first time I saw it was maybe from our friend Bo Borja in, uh, in Spain. Yeah, was, very skilled um, guy. Amazing guy, good friend. Um, placing temporary implants or even just a few screws just to have something stable to do these full arch implant cases. It makes makes a lot of sense for me. I yeah, mean, uh, you see, people is creating a way to overcome it and be able mm -hmm. to capture uh, the intraoral uh, uh, information. Yeah, and, and it makes sense. It does. It does make sense for me, Kyle. I don't get good. Uh, I think yeah. the, 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 the the evolution will be not be, this is necessary. I would say what we call one shot scanning would be you can scan and you just give one shot. And right, that like a like an impression. Yeah. Yeah, there is I remember there who... was a company that was doing that a few years ago, but it never happened. No, no, it did not. 
take off. I mean, they create kind of a little impression tray. Yeah, and that's because they came to my go. office. <laughs> yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, uh, and, and did not go anywhere because they could not make that really being um, good enough on the on the algorithm side. Right. And, but I think people is working, and all the companies, I would say, they are focusing on 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 developing things that could make uh, this you know possible for everyone, not for few, yeah. for everyone. Right. I think that, well, that, that's a good transition. Let's talk about where you think, especially we'll stay with intraoral scanning, where this is going in the future. What do you think? And, you know, I know you have inside ideas that you can't share, but um, in general, where do you think intraoral scanning is going? What do you think will change? I know you've already mentioned AI, and I agree that will infiltrate every aspect of dentistry. But what do you think for intraoral scanning? What's coming next? Um, that you can say. Yeah, no, no, I can say. I mean, I, I, what I'm what I'm sharing here is uh, most of the information. I believe a lot of people already know, and it's just it's just my perception. Um, I, let me give you my 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 feeling on my on the tree shape side on on what I think mm -hmm. is the the, the the way that uh, scanner should go. People is misleading once again that the scanners can do much more than restorations. And I think we're gonna be scanning more of our patient on a daily basis. And this is already yeah. being done for several companies. If you have, for instance, aligners that you they ask you to scan the patient in the middle of the treatment and the end. So let's go back again to the blocks that we developed for the companies that don't want people let's put in this way, powdering, they would like to control a little more. Yeah. And that's what exactly is happening uh, on the, I would say the ortho side that companies, aligner companies are scanning and asking people because they are controlling the facts and if people is doing, because that can hurt their uh, brand. Their business, time. yeah. So it's called the monitoring side and, and, and I'm a strong believer on that. Uh, since we start, uh, and, and I, th I think all the companies will come with what we call multi-use device because the investment is quite high. So yeah. you can, can make a restoration, you can scan and make an intracanal post-milled. Mm -hmm. You can scan, and so I think that, that's the, the, the multi, that, that's going to be a diverse process. Yeah, and, and and I still believe, Kyle. Uh, um, I know you have a nice setup. You have uh, people working for you. You are very top on the, on, on the pyramid of the dentist. You <laughs> have, you. you know, yeah. You have lab techs. You have. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, a Brazilian lab get... technician. Don't forget that a Brazilian lab technician. <laughs> you very good. <laughs> but anyways, uh, what the point is? Uh, so you're unique. Let's, pit, let's think yeah. on, the, on the other people. Uh, I see people will do more and more on their office because the lab bill is still quite high everywhere yeah. you go. So the, the, the scanners with a multi-use component, we allow dentists to do more under control. Let's put it this way. I don't want people to do everything. This, yeah. is, it, this is quite controversial. Mm -hmm. But people will be doing more things that they would fear to do without getting some scanners and someone controlling them. Yeah. And, and I'm strongly a believer that everybody will have a printer in their office. It's small. For sure. Yeah. Oh, Jamil this just joined. Middle, hey, Jamil. This mill, this middle one, the mill, the milling and blah, blah, blah. Maybe few. Yeah. Because we now have a very uh, easy way to production in a lean manufacturer away from labs. So if you are able to scan, sand, and get the product done, you can scan design and save some bucks if you have an empty agenda in one day, patient uh, cancel. Yep. So I think that we, we're going to change. And the scanner will be the key driver on that, on those business models. Yeah. You um, know, one, uh, thing, one thing that you mentioned that I actually show in a lot of my lectures, and it's your slide that you gave me, your video that you gave me years ago, is that monitoring piece and this idea that every time a patient comes in to your office, you scan them. 
whether it's for a post-op, for a cleaning, for a surgery, whatever it is. And then over time, we can look at this patient and see how things have changed, right? See how yes. the teeth have moved, if there's recession, if there's wear. And we can analyze this in a data-driven format instead of a very subjective uh, yeah. view, right? We can yes. say, you know, Mrs. Jones, you've lost 0 0.3 millimeters on your canine since we saw you last year. You may be grinding and we should get you into a night guard or control this somehow. Also, I think it's really important, like the video that you sent me was a healing uh, tissue graft and being able to, to monitor our surgeries over time. Because oftentimes we use different materials, different sutures, different yes. techniques. And we can see what works, not only in our hands, but what works on different patients, right? What works on a patient with diabetes? What works on a patient with uh, thick tissue, thin tissue? And like yeah. you said, bring together all of that AI so that we can have a better roadmap on how to treat each individual patient. And you, you, you talked to me about that years ago, and I've been trying to, to spread that, that world. And, and another thing that Christian says about this too, is that once you have the patient's history in scanning, we can always go back in time, right? So if the patient gets in a it. car accident, we go back to when their teeth were, you know, the youngest, the most beautiful, scan it, mill it, make it just like that, and boom, give them back their smile, recreate it to exactly natural proportion. It's interesting that um, uh, uh, it's, I am implementing this in my office, which I'm scanning most of the kids on 14, 15 years old, and sometimes even before, and yep. keep their file. Uh, and, 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 and that will, at, at one point, bring us a lot of uh, information. And oh, yeah. Of course, save the patient for whatever needs. I mean, you can replicate what the nature gave to the patient. Uh, we now yeah. are, are getting donators. Uh, like mm -hmm. Christian yourself, and uh, you know this is nice, but it's someone else. Uh, the idea is to have the own patient, and Donate that's themselves. a good selling point. And you can monetize it, and and that's yeah. that's the, the 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 other discussion that I'm having. And I have some proposal. I remember I presented in China uh, past year in 2018. I'm not Ricardo Mitani, myself, Calamita. We went to a event wow. in China. Nice group. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it actually was nice. And I remember I presented that, uh, a little chart, which I came from my own mind. I created a chart when you have a premium cleaning, mm -hmm. when you have a crown, and some numbers that you could say, okay, if you produce production oh, is... Hold on one sec. My son <laughs> just went to the bathroom, and I need to pull his pants up. Okay. okay? Go, go. <laughs> hold on one sec, everybody. Yeah, you keep talking to people. Keep talking, yes. So and then and then what happened is when you have um, uh, uh, I actually lost track. Kyle, you're so funny. You were talking uh, about China and yeah, where yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. were. And then, yeah. And then I remember I presented that chart which I pull up, building up numbers on what you do a premium cleaning, including you know twenty bucks. Including bucks a scan. A mm -hmm. scan, and then the other chart was uh, when you have a production itself that you can have some lab discount depends the country you are and the other one was uh, 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 offering a monitoring for the patient uh, you know just for another numbers and then when you build the numbers uh, along the, the years uh, it makes sense I mean you you pay off you offer something to the patient you are not really deceiving the patient this is very important to understand you are sure. not deceiving the patient you are offering listen I can you know, monitor it instant. For instance, uh, cervical caries lesion. Uh, you know, some of the things that sometimes I don't know what to do. Should I graft it? Should I put a composite? Should I do anything? Should I just make right. a good adjustment? Uh, and uh, we have a guy in Brazil, Paulo Vinicius, very smart guy. He's a yeah. beautiful book who is now doing this. You know, he's tracking down. And I believe he's going to come with the data in, in a very uh, close future. Uh, about how this really behaves. I think that's what will take off and make scanners uh, uh, taking off. The yeah. software, AI, this is going to really improve for all companies. We know that. Uh, and um, when you think of just the, we, we, we forget about it oftentimes, but yes. how processing power 
you know, doubles every 18 months. Yes. The processing can be so much faster. You know, when yeah. we started doing scanning, I remember when I first tried a scanner, I don't know, 10 years ago, it took forever. It took forever. It was like you were in the mouth for 10 minutes per arch and everyone was just saying, just take a regular impression already. And, I, you know, I agree with you. and then we see that I remember what kind of blew my mind was when when three shape came with that video where that guy was scanning his mouth all in one go in like, I don't know, a minute and 20 seconds. I don't remember what it was, but it was, you know, a lot of that is just processing power. Not a doubt. This, this is a big, big change. But now we are coming uh, 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 on a comment on the speed. Everybody wants speed, speed. I, yes. I am not on that mood anymore. Speed, yeah. I believe we are good. Good okay, enough. Yeah. We improve it. Mm -hmm. But I think we are good enough. But instead of speed is the quality. So meaning we are finding a balance that too fast does not give you the best quality. So uh, mm -hmm. as Miguel, uh, uh, Mig Stanley, you are, yeah. <laughs> you are a brother. My, my, my Portuguese cousin, there is low, yes. There's low dentistry concept. Uh, I wouldn't say slow, but you know, on the scanning side, the, the, the way that the quality of the scan that you're creating is become much more important as we discuss than trying to do things really fast. Um, yeah. yeah. I believe we are fast enough, could be faster, fine. But you know what? Let's do it on your piece. It's already good enough. So you, you get trained and then get a good quality scan out of your scanner. I think that's the key. Let, let me ask you this, because um, I was working on some research that I haven't finished yet, but looking at over scanning, right? So you scan an area and you come back and you're trying to get that one contact or, you know, um, contour area and you scan and scan and scan and scan and how that can actually increase the mistakes in the scanner. Can yeah, you talk uh, to that? Yeah, I can talk. Um, I'm actually um, going deep on this subject now because uh, this is a question that everybody's asking now. Yeah. Uh, we know that uh, for some areas and, and, and second molars that they move, you cannot get it. I mean, although you try anyways, we know that. We keep trying. Uh, and the, the, what my readings and where I am now, this is what my feeling is, is every time you pile up algorithms on top to stitching, you are generating inaccuracies. Yeah. Because um, this comes from my finite element understanding. When you have a yeah. finite element calculations and we can bring that with cautions here on the comparisons, because the finite element is, uh, if you have a square as your element, Mm -hmm. In each corner, you have a yeah, calculations that converge to the center, right? So if you start adding too much calculations, the chance of errors will be higher. Yeah. That's why uh, even the companies, they suggest you to just get it once and don't do it again because mm -hmm. you pile up more data and yeah. inaccuracies can be built on. Yeah. And the file becomes... Uh, uh, Massive. Massive. Yeah. So the processing is slowed down, then some glitches, and then the numbers and so on. So I'm yeah. actually uh, getting, uh, it's a good question, uh, more information, Kyle, but I would suggest as the time you get the information that you need, stop it. Yeah. Stop it. So that's, uh, that's the, what I said. I mean, go get the best you can. Don't try to speed up and go back again. Go mm -hmm. slower a little bit, get what you need in one shot and move forward instead of trying to do one and then go again. And you ended up in being much more slower if you're doing that fashion. Yeah, um, so I this think is that's the really good that advice. I'm at, that I'm reading now. So do your scan, get yourself used to what the way you do, capture it, move forward. Don't, don't try to do it. Except now for the complete danger cases, because we have seen that when you start getting the rich information, uh, you know, the computer and, and the reads, is in, in, it's, it's in, in, interesting. I, I don't understand that yet. It's, it gets it immediately. And then you start like getting the other patches. But chances for the stitchings being a little off are higher as well. So you need mm -hmm. to be careful. 
Okay. So I will I will uh, share with you some of the papers from this guy from Italy who my from my perspective is the guy who knows more about identity scanning and I think that's the 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 issue that we all have now. Great, yeah, and I I will share it on my Instagram so that everybody watching this can sure. Sure. can get access to this. So we've sure. got about ten more minutes. Um, mm -hmm. One question that that I wanted to talk to you about is what do you have coming down the pipeline of research? Any new research that you're working on now? What are you looking uh, into? Yeah, most of the work I'm devoting is uh, on the computer dental side. I have shared some of this. Okay. And the other one is on the intracanal uh, post and course being yeah. done digitally. Cool. Uh, we just came with a book now, which I have one chapter only talking about it, and the book will be translated to English by Quintessence, which is nice. we're very proud of uh, of that. I as soon as the English version comes, I'm, I'm going to share one with you for sure. Yeah. And um, and what's coming is that the scanners are getting better on capturing depth. Yeah, because that's hard to get all the way down into yeah. a canal. Yes, but however, however. Uh, we have now prime scan with a very interesting process of data capturing, mm -hmm. and and I was able to capture a canal uh, with a trios all the way down. Uh, it's not a, a, a it's not a simple to, to any scanner. It's not as simple. Mm -hmm. Each scanner has different strategy of scanning. Right. But you are able to do it. However, what happened is uh, the softwares are developing for that route of uh, 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 work. But TreeShape came with an idea of using scan posts, scan flags mm -hmm. for intro canal. I can, I can share with you this because this mm -hmm. is already available on the market. You can find it in France easier. What I have is the first one, prototypes. Let me just share that with you guys here. I think it's quite interesting. Of course, it's, hand, it's handwritten because let me take one out just so people can see it. Okay. So you prep your, your canal and then you put this inside the canal and you scan. Okay. So, and the software has this scan flag and then you line it up and then you design it. So what's the, what's the concept behind it uh, is um, you can produce post and crown in a single shot. Let me be very clear here. I'm pushing the envelope a little bit on that, okay? Yeah. Uh, but those ideas are coming along, Kyle. Those concepts of enhancing, improving, and making patient come once to your office. Uh, I have an endo guy. We are doing a work now, which is does the endo. I scan and I and I mail and I do the whole thing in one morning for the patient. Endo, post, and crown. Very cool. Uh, as we are talking here with several people, I know the audience, uh, you know, uh, goes up and down. I'm not saying this is the way that should be done. As a, the same thing as the denture I told you about the shorter flanges, we right. were looking into it, mucostatic yeah. concepts, which, anyways, uh, it, this is another thing that we are really, with my, uh, my colleagues here in, in Brazil, Rodrigo, and we, who we published the book, we are kind of spreading those concepts and those ideas. Well, I think it's uh, good and, to and, introduce these and, you know, Maybe they, they may not be ready or they may still be in development, but to yes. let people know what's coming because it gets them excited about the digital yeah. workflow, using your scanners more, you know, feeling there like you go. get your, your money's worth out of these, you know, very expensive pieces of machine. Of course. So th that's, that's, that's uh, as I told you, the multi-use concept. Or, right. You, know, you don't produce only crowns. Yeah, and it's a, it, it's a change, as you always say, Kyle. I like the, the words you use. A mindset change. Christian mm -hmm. also use it a lot. Yeah. So if you don't have a mindset changed, no technology will help you. That's true. None. You're gonna put your money, and again, you're gonna say this doesn't work. It doesn't work yeah. for me. 
is the same discussion about taking photos with uh, cell phones and, uh, and, uh, and cameras. Yeah. So uh, both work. It depends mm -hmm. on how and what you need. So yeah. it's not one better than the other. You cannot compare them. Two different things. Yeah. But they work. Yeah. So I think this is the main message that we, we, can, we can give here, Kyle, is that uh, um, the limit, it, it's on you more than on the machine. So you, you can explore it much more. You can develop further. You can create your own way to do it. My, my uh, workflow is different than yours because my yeah. setup is different than everybody else's will be mm -hmm. different. So we give ideas and people try to find because that's what gives to you the opportunity. Their way of getting way there. That would be the, the, the key and the main message. Caio? Oh, you're back. Caio? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I lost you too. I lost you a little bit. <laughs> okay. So anyways, uh, there, was, there was one question on here that I wanted to answer that someone asked six minutes ago. It says, generally speaking, where are we nowadays in terms of trueness or accuracy of intraoral scanning for a long span or full arch? Um, I can't read the whole thing, but. Yeah, yeah, long span and full yeah. arch. Yeah. Uh, good question. We all know that uh, scanners, they create uh, distortions as, you know, materials they do. Mm -hmm. um, strategies of scanning uh, plays a big, a big uh, uh, part of it. Let me give an example. I have colleagues uh, on the engineering side that they think that if you want to do a full arch, if you scan from the front to the one side and to the front to the other side on the first shot, you have less distortion because you work more on the line, on the, on the straight line, okay. than if you're trying to curve and stitch it. Okay. Or, and several papers are, are out there on that. Uh, what I have in, in, as, a, as a information, and again, uh, Kai, I will send you all the PDFs, mm -hmm. that if you have a long span bridge on one side from K9 to Molo, let's put it this way, I'm not saying for you to do it, but anyways, yeah. This is uh, quite good enough. Great. However, if you want, if you start the stitching on the curve around the, side, the curve on the front, yeah, that is still iffy uh, for every uh, procedure. Either you are capturing on a hybrid or even teeth. On of teeth. course, teeth are uh, easier. My yeah. recommendation on those cases are you scan it. Start the production immediately, send the file for production, and have a, uh, um, uh, a model mm -hmm. for preclinical adjustment. Of course, we all have it. Yeah. Well, should I, should, I, should I then use a printer, a printed model? Well, those cases, I would go for a PVS if you are doing a full mouth rehabilitation and you want to do it. That is one reason, because if you go for the printing, if you have inaccuracies, again, on the beginning, if you have distortion in the beginning, your model will come with some distortions as well. There is no compensation. Right. Uh, and then you say, well, this is already analog work. Yeah, as a combination of capturing, understanding the limitation and distortion that can be created in the full arch, and then you mm -hmm. take a PVS. Well, then I just go in and take a PVS in one shot. Yeah. It depends on how you work and what's how the flow that you want to you want to create uh it's it's, it's still it's still not 100 percent for all of us yeah. uh, uh doing long arch lar large span uh, i span uh, without you know i would say a checking model mm -hmm. in yeah. those cases i would recommend uh, an impression for the checking model those yeah. cases and I think that's fair. I know that uh, people like Eric Van Doren and people like that are, are, are still doing um, something like that. Yeah, so th this is, that's for now. But again, we are developing so fast. Uh, uh, and our companies are such the true shape which I consult. I mean, they are improving the, the hardware and the software so much uh, and the others as well uh, uh, that this is gonna be fixed in a very uh, uh, soon time. But anyways, uh, we still need to be careful on the decision and, and what type of case you have in your hands. Printing, yeah. I love it. 
and, and, and impressions, forecasts for preclinical adjustments and so on, I also like them. Uh, it depends. It depends on the case, and, and, and I find my own way to do it, and everybody does as well. Yeah. I don't know if well, that Nelson. Answer, Kyle. No, I th it does. I think it does answer because, you know, sometimes maybe there isn't a definitive answer. The answer is we still have to figure it out. And, and that's okay. As being dentists and being researchers and being scientists, sometimes we don't have the answer. And that yeah, is yeah. the answer for now. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, need to, we need to go slow now. But again, sure. it's improving. It's improving significantly, very fast. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, Muito please, obrigado, man. foi um prazer <laughs> para mim. E talvez na próxima vez no Brasil. Okay, uh, thank you so so much, man. It's good to talk to you. Uh, in those times, everybody is locked down, and uh, it's yeah. good to share. I could have this conversation with you alone, but I think sharing and and and, and would be and, and it's a very way, it's a very good way to to uh, you know people know you and and see where you are. I have my own cockpit just to show you my cockpit. Yeah. Uh, this is here, the scanner is there, uh, you know, masks, and, and there it we is. all have our own stuff. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, everybody, Thank for you, coming. Kai. And uh, ciao, everybody. Ciao, ciao, guys.